welcome to the Society of Amateur Radio Astronomers. The session tonight is the detection of pulsar B0531 plus 21, commonly known as the crab pulsar. We're using the Green Bank 20 meter radio telescope. First we'll find the information about the pulsar. We'll use the ATNF pulsar catalog. You can find this by going to any search engine and entering the ATNF pulsar catalog. You'll see it come up, click that. It comes up from the Australia Telescope National Facility. We'll make a selection of name, right ascension, declination, P0, which is the period, DM, which is the dispersion measure. And since the 20 meter radio telescope has a 1400 megahertz feed on it now, we'll choose the signal strength at 1400 megahertz. We'll scroll down and we'll do a sort and we'll sort by S1400 selection in descending order. This will give us the highest uh, signal strength in the table showing up on uh, close to the top. We'll hit table. And here's the selection that came up. You'll see there's name, right ascension, declination, P0, which is the period of the pulsar, dispersion measure, and the signal strength at 1400 megahertz in millijaskies. We'll scroll down until we see the signal strength pop up. Alright, we'll scroll down until we find uh, the pulsar. Here it is right here. B0531 plus 21. Right ascension is 05 hours 34 minutes. Declination is 22 degrees 0 minutes. The period is 0 0.0334 seconds. Dispersion measure is 56.77. And the signal strength at 1400 megahertz is 14 millijanskis. Okay, we're going to go to the Skynet site now and look up Crab Nebula Pulsar. And it's found it. Here it is in the celestial sphere. Go down here. I'm going to call it the pulsar because we're going to go pulsar mode on it. It's the indication of how high it is in the sky. It's up at 75 degrees almost. This is a 20 degree mark, so anything above that line should be a, a good uh, elevation to view the object. Save and continue. Look at this, we're going to be in pulsar mode. So that's low resolution. And we're going to go to all on the filter. That will give us the maximum bandwidth to uh, view the pulsar. We'll save and continue. All right, we're going to use the track, and we're going to go, since the pulsar is uh, notoriously hard to get, we're going to use three minutes for the duration, 0 0.0001 seconds for the integration time. Here's our data. Submitting it. And it took the new request.
Now, telescope is active, shows that it has taken up the request and is currently making the observation. This shows that the observation has been completed. We'll go look at the data. Okay, here's the uh, results. These two strong peaks here indicate we got a strong pulsar. And notice the two smaller peaks. This happens on uh, numerous pulsars where you get a secondary pulse with that. You can see over the time versus phase, you can see the slight streak here. It's not a real strong one. And you see the uh, chi squared, pretty good linear plot there, which means you had, we had pretty good signal most of the way through. On the phase versus frequency plot, you do see a pretty strong lines here. Not much up on the higher frequencies. But in the P dot and period, you see a nice peak there. The period measured was 33.804 uh, milliseconds, which works with the ATNF database. The dispersion measure read pretty well here. We'll read it up here with the actual number is 56.836, which is pretty close to the uh, ATNF database. If you plot the period versus P dot, period and P dot, you get a nice point here. That's a good indication of a you know, good pulsar detection. So this appears to be a very good pulsar detection of B0531 plus 21, the crab pulsar. We have successfully detected pulsar B0531 plus 21, the crab pulsar, using the Green Bank 20 meter radio telescope. If you are interested in radio astronomy, please visit our site at radio-astronomy.org. Thank you.